guys? This week we have back. Um, as always, I'm joined by Matt from Lakeshore Elite Fitness, and what we're going to do this week is we're actually going to do technically six exercises, um, and the reason being is back is one of those body parts, guys, that is um, a bread and butter, so to speak, of May of pretty much most any athletic training you're going to do. Any athletes, powerlifting, bodybuilding, um, back is one of the most important, important aspects and also one of the hardest body parts to really fully work out. Uh, just because there's so many muscles, so much muscle in your back that really hitting every aspect of your back is going to be the main difference you see between um, an exceptional athlete or power lifter or bodybuilder and a champion athlete or power, uh, power lifter. And the reason I say that is because there's just so much of it to work. Um, so we're going to try to hit a little bit of everything today. Uh, keep in mind that I think today, um, Matt, should we do four sets of everything today just because of the... Um, with back, um, you do want a little bit more volume. Okay. Um, back seems to respond better to volume than um, less volume. So we'll do four sets. That's going to suck. That's going to suck a lot. All right, so we always talk about changing the angles and um, hand position, body position. All those things are going to affect where you hit your back. So like Aaron touched on, the, the back is so big. There's so much musculature involved that you definitely have to hit it with high volume in many, many different angles, many different exercises to fully develop your back. Um, where to start with back, it really depends on the person. Everyone seems to have a different weakness with their back. Some people need to fill out the top, some need lower lat. Whatever it may be, um, your exercises should dictate um, what your workout looks like. So ours is obviously a sample workout, but your needs are going to be much different than ours, and everyone is very individualized. We're going to start with some pull downs to warm up. We're going to go wide grip and close grip. One arm cable rows. The reason I like one arm cable rows is because you're able to get an increased range of motion, get that extra stretch. We're going to go into T bar rows, some dumbbell shrugs to really finish off the traps, and then we're going to go hit our lower back with some hyper extensions. Uh and then the last thing I want to add about this particular workout, guys, is my biggest thing that uh, I've been trying to work out with my back is thickness. So as you'll notice, um, there's a lot of bodybuilders, like I, I remember watching Arnold videos, um, you know, Kai Green, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, all of them in their back workouts, they all kind of started with um, pull downs. And the reason that they all said they did that was just, you know, to kind of loosen up the lats, loosen up more of your back muscles, and also they want to build that width first. Now, uh, my biggest problem that I've had so far is thickness in my back and just kind of making the inside of my back kind of as proportionate to my lat spread and everything else. So that's why we're doing this particular workout is because I'm selfish. And so Matt's kind of, we've kind of talked about it and put this together more for a, a thickness back um, workout than anything else while sticking to the basics tried and true of always kind of hitting those outside lats first. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing that we're going for, guys. Always at the end, too. Uh, keep in mind that shrugs, uh, we're going to do them with back today. You don't have to do them with back, uh, but we are going to do them with back today because we didn't do them in our shoulders video. And hyperextensions, again, also. Um, the biggest thing that you'll see, those is guys who don't hit their lower back a lot and do the hyperextensions. Um, they call it the Christmas tree in bodybuilding language. Um, and it really is the thing that kind of tightens your lower back up, kind of shows off your lower lats, and just kind of finishes off the, that V taper that you might be going for if you're doing more of a bodybuilding style of a workout. Um, Matt, anything else before we hit it? No, let's kill it. First right. exercise we have is wide grip lat pull downs. Um, the biggest thing when you're doing these is really concentrating on feeling your lats working. Um, the way you want to do any back exercise is the first thing you want to do, which you can't really see very well, is you want to pull back with your scapulas. And this will help you engage your back muscles. So come all the way down. The biggest thing too is to drive back with your elbows. You might not be able to see it very well, but you want to be able to drive back with your elbows. Everyone kind of, when they do it wrong, they bring their elbows down in front of their body instead of pulling back with their elbows. So pull back with your elbows. Your collarbone is a really good gauge of kind of where you want it to be. And then as you can see with Aaron here, he's getting a good stretch at the top. Remember to optimally recruit those muscle fibers, you want to be able to stretch the muscles. So get a good stretch at the top, squeeze back with your scapula, squeeze your back working. So the back is the hardest muscle to work because you can't see it. So really get that mind-muscle connection to really optimally recruit all the muscle fibers. Uh, the only thing I want to add on this one, guys, is um, the biggest thing that I see with uh, other people, what they'll do is they'll 
Um, they won't come down all the way and touch their chest so they can put more weight on there. They'll swing a lot with the weight. Um, and and th those are two big no-nos. Again, we're not trying to just pull weight around with momentum. We're trying to isolate the back. And again, this is more of a lat movement. So you really want to get that squeeze and that full range of motion and keep the tension on the muscle. When you start to, um, when you start swaying and you start not going down all the way, you're losing range of motion, you're losing quality of rep, and you're wasting a lot of your time. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? We have some close grip pull downs. Now the angle on here is going to be a little bit different. Um, we're trying to really feel our lower lats working on this exercise. So really working on the thickness of the lower lats. A lot of people, um, the insertion of their lower lats is different, but um, you can never have too thick lower lats. So on this one, you want to lean back slightly more than you were with the, the regular pull downs, and then really squeeze again, really uh, come back with the scapulas first, and then really try to feel your lower lats working on this exercise. Good stretch at the top, as you can see Aaron's doing, and then really squeeze on the bottom. Um, the only thing I would add on this one, guys, is again, whatever angle you choose to um, lean towards, because uh, again, the the angle that you lean at can kind of vary which area of the back that you're going to be working a little bit more. When you pick uh, angles, stick with that angle throughout the movement. Um, you know, if the last one or two reps you start seeing a sway a little bit, um, you know, again, I prefer not to, but again, you want to try to stay at that main angle that you're working so you're concentrating on the same area of your back throughout the entire exercise. That's the biggest mistake that I see with people who do these is they start straight up like Matt is here, and then by the time they're done, they're leaning back almost like a row because they have nothing left, um, and they're using too much weight. So make sure that you are staying focused on exactly where you're trying to work your back and that exact angle on the seat so that way you're not working something you're not supposed to. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? So here we have one arm cable rows. Um, the reason, like I said in the introduction, why I like one arm cable rows is because you're able to get um, a greater uh, range of motion, a greater stretch of your back than you would when you're doing two hands at one time. Uh, so here, get a really good stretch. If you're going to do one arm, take advantage of that stretch. And once again, we're working, depending on how you position your hand and how you twist, if you notice we're twisting, that's going to hit the, the lower lats a little bit differently. And if you notice throughout the video, uh, me and Aaron will be using straps on our heavier sets 
The reason being, your back is very big, very large, very strong. It's going to be um, a little bit stronger than your, your forearm muscles. So eventually your forearm muscles are going to fatigue and we're trying to keep all the tension on our back. If you're worried about gripping super tight and you're getting a really big forearm pump and you're using your biceps, you're taking a lot less emphasis on your back. So if you need to use straps, by all means use straps to really feel your back working, but try not to use them as a crutch where you're using them every single set. So you don't want to lose all your grip strength, but use them on your heavier sets so you can really focus on your back doing all the work. Uh, the, the one thing I've got on this one, guys, is uh, the main thing that I noticed and the best way to kind of keep your form so you're not really pushing with your legs is you'll notice when me and Matt do this, um, our legs aren't really moving at all. They're used as a base. When a lot of people will do this, they will push with their legs, they will pull with their lower back, trying to just heave that weight around. Um, when you're doing these single arms, again, remember, on the way down, when you're pulling the weight back towards the rack and you're letting it go and you're using the negative contraction of the movement, um, staying in control really helps with your form on this because what you're going to notice is if you're really letting it go, you're going to start to feel your body sway quite a bit. Whereas if you really try to control it on the way down, you're going to notice that your back's not moving as much. You're more isolating the side of your back that you're working on, and you're not going to see those, those movements. So really try to be slow and controlled on the way down, and that's just going to keep you in the right form and keep you from maybe tweaking your lower back or injuring yourself. Um, that was the one main thing I realized in this movement was keeping that under control is really, really important if you're trying to um, keep yourself pre from preventing injury and keep all the tension on the back. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? T-bar rows from the floor. There's different ways to do the T-bar rows, different ways to position yourself. Um, now if I were to stand more upright in this movement, I'd be hitting a little bit more lower lat. Um, right now I am a little bit more upright. If you want to feel more of your upper back working, you would then just position yourself to more of a, a parallel position and now you're going to be hitting more of the upper middle back. So depending on where you're trying to feel it is going to really depend on um, your body position. So if you want to hit more lower lats, stand a little bit more upright. If you want to feel a little bit more of your upper back, um, then you're going to lean forward a little bit more. The only issue is going to be um, some pressure on your lower back. The more parallel you are to the floor, the more your lower back is going to be engaged. So if you have any discomfort with this exercise, you're just going to want to stand up a little bit higher with it. But get a good squeeze at the top, good stretch on the bottom. Um, just like with any exercise. Uh, the one tip to give you guys on this is again if you notice the weights that we're using are not 45s or 25s. Now we can put 45s on here but what that does is it kind of limits your range of motion because you can't bring the bar all the way down, you can't really squeeze it. Um, you can actually squeeze a little bit closer and let it um, go a little bit further down if you're using the smaller weights just due to the size of the actual weight. It has nothing to do with the amount of weight. You could stack this all the way to the end if you wanted. The point is to try to keep that full range of motion, be able to squeeze it just a little bit tighter at the top and let it release a little bit further down on the bottom. Um, when you're using 45 pound dumbbells or uh, 45 pound weights on that bar, you're going to notice a huge difference in the range of motion that you can actually get while doing this exercise. What you, what you want? What you, what you want?
Dumbbell shrugs. Um, once again, we're really finishing off our traps here. Um, depending on how you position yourself, how you uh, pull will depend kind of on where you, you feel it in your traps. Um, you can do, you can either do dumbbells or barbells, whatever kind of feels comfortable. But the key here is again, try to really limit the swing. You'll see a lot of people just really swing the weight up um, and use all momentum instead of their traps. So. Really try to feel your, your traps working. Try to keep your arms as straight as possible. You see, um, it's virtually impossible not to have a little bit of a bend, but you'll see people that, you know, it almost looks like they're doing uh, almost a hammer curl when they're, when they're trying to work their trap. So really get a good squeeze, come all the way down, squeeze it at the top. Um, like I said, you can either use a barbell, which you can load up a little bit more, and you can even do it behind the back, which is going to work more of the back of the traps. This is working um, primarily the top of the traps. Um, the, the one tip that I actually got from um, an old trainee buddy uh, when doing shrugs, and this really made me not be able to use as much weight, is um, instead of, because you'll see a lot of people use just literally on shrugs is one of those, again, kind of like bench press, one of those movements where you'll see guys use just an absolute ton of weight. They're barely moving it. They're swinging their whole body. They're not really doing anything for their traps. Um, and most people actually have, you know, complimented me and said, you know, you've got pretty decent sized traps. And then they see me and I never rarely use over a 60 pound dumbbell. Uh, the reason being is when you, if you think to yourself, say I don't know and then you do the shrug like the I don't know shrug if you do that you're really just focusing on the actual trap muscle you're not moving your arms you're not swinging with your back you're just solely trying to squeeze that muscle up into the back of your neck and then slowly let it back down and you're gonna actually notice a ton of growth by doing it that way and you're also gonna feel the burn a lot more in your actual trap instead of just swinging your body um, and trying to push that weight up as hard as you can what you, what you want what you, what you want off we have hyper extensions obviously this is going to be all lower back um, truthfully your lower back can never be strong enough so during some of the sets we wore uh, a back belt um, which is then gonna not make your core and your lower back work as much um, so we're really to really finish off your back really finish off especially if you're a bodybuilder and you want that Christmas tree look on stage this is going to give that to you. So there's different ways to do hyperextensions, different ways to work your lower back. This is just one of the ways that we chose to do it today. So you want to go down slow and as controlled as possible and get a little bit of a squeeze at the top of the, the movement. Just really try to feel your back working the whole time. One tip and trick that I've learned is to really make your back do more work is to try to suck in your gut. So really suck it in and then that's going to actually make your lower back work a little bit more. Um, again, guys, the reason, and this is a good thing to do kind of at the end of your workout to cap it off, and the reason is, is again, your lower back and your core are, are your stabilizers doing, during a lot of your back exercises, so you don't really want to pre-exhaust with lower back because you're going to be putting your lower back into use in pretty much every exercise that you've seen up until this point. There is some sort of lower back involvement, um, and that's one of the most injury-prone areas in any person, and one of the biggest reasons that people quit working out is because of lower back pain. So making sure that you're doing this at the end, again, slow and controlled, and doing it so you're just isolating that lower back 
um, is a good way to strengthen it, but also to prevent injury. Again, you want to make sure that you're probably doing this towards the end of your workout and just really, again, feeling a good squeeze and then just being done with it when you're All right, guys. So you just saw our sample back workout. Again, we did five different exercises um, as well as some hyper extensions, had some shrugs in there. Um, as you can tell, uh, with back, there's a lot of different ways you can hit back depending on your hand positions, um, you know, form, um, you know, where you're bringing it when you're pulling back. So many different ways that you can really work your back differently. Um, but like I said, it was a good workout for us and uh, there's not really much else to say on this one, man. Um, like Aaron talked about, it's all about variety too. We showed you a few exercises, that was only five exercises. There's so many different exercises to do with back. There's also, you can make those exercises completely different by just the way you twist or position your body. So don't think that's all you can do. There's so much things you should be doing and back really responds to variety and volume. So keep continuously switching it up. Um, that's about it for me. All right, and as always guys, we're here at the beautiful powerhouse gym in Grand Haven, Michigan. Um, as always, if you want to find out anything more about the gym, we did just go 24 hours. So if that was maybe, if the time frame was maybe uh, holding you down from coming on over, Go on over to the website, check us out, stop on by, uh, sign up, just let them know we sent you. We'll try to get a little bit of free stuff out of it. But uh, as always, guys, also we have Matt, um, and if you want to get in contact with him, his Facebook page just hit over 100 likes. Yep. So Very that's exciting. huge. Um, so we can actually link them now, which is really, really nice. Uh, but go ahead and follow him on Lakeshore Elite Fitness. Everything for him is going really, really well. Um, everybody that seems to talk to him or deal with him or have anything to do with fitness with him seems to be getting in better shape and improving and getting the goals that they asked for, um, not just random goals. They're getting the goals they asked for, and that's really, I kind of think, what separates him from everybody else. But as I said, guys, all the links will be in the comments below, in the section below, so go ahead and click on those, take a look. Uh, make sure you like him on Facebook. It always helps to have you know, updates for you guys. If he gives out any free advice, any meetings, uh, any Q&As, he's always on there looking for stuff to do, so give him a shout, and as always, see you in the next one.